telemortison. Is that a good blood pressure tablet? Uh, no, rarely used for blood pressure. Okay, just asking. What did you ask about that? Uh, so <laughs> random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so I know a lot of bodybuilders that use telemartison to counter their high blood pressure when they take steroids. Right, okay. Just a random one for myself. Just So, uh, so, just so Ed, for the bodybuilders watching, is there a better one to be taking? <laughs> Please well, it's don't probably... take... Right, right my, my formal advice is just don't take steroids. Well, they're, we, got, they're not going to listen to that and, one. And, yeah. and especially, especially uh, the testosterone uh, supplementation. I mean, we've had several people in the last couple of years with pretty bad heart failure as a result of those things what so, just just testosterone or just uh are they taking like heart heart pressure compounds or do you not know what well, would you it? believe they're not very reliable historians when it comes to that that's what i was going to say yeah <laughs> so it's it's a it's one in it taking testosterone and there's another taking trend or something yeah. a lot harsher again we can go into that yeah, another yeah, time yeah, yeah. that might be a different yeah. podcast for yeah. you but yeah no I, I just thought i'd ask because i know like a lot of people in the body bodybuilding community take telemartison because yeah. maybe it's easy to get hold of I, or, yeah. or whatever it is i would say it's probably relatively easy to get hold of yeah it is yeah it is easy to get hold of just just, just while we're on this tangent i do want to continue for a second yeah. because i talking to a lot of guys moving into their 40s that there is a lot more um, I guess openness and a lot more blokes looking at things like TRT now. Mm -hmm. And you obviously have some endocrinologists who have, you know, sort of medically run clinics that are well governed and they'll look after you. But sadly, the reality is there are a lot of people who are just getting it Going from God knows where. Thing. Yeah. Um, so is there, is there like, even under supervised circumstances, is there a, a risk to heart health? when it comes to taking something like testosterone replacement therapy? Yeah, I mean, anything that increases your your blood pressure, which is one of the ways that the testosterone uh, supplementations affects heart health, anything that does that is going to cause all of the damage that that high blood pressure did for you, ultimately. Now, you can do good work by giving another drug a blood pressure lowering tablet just, to counteract that, that effect. Just not, just not tell them what. Yeah, you could. I mean, you you can do that, but ultimately, you know. My, so what my, one should they take then? <laughs> no, my, the, the formal advice is I can't. I mean, I can't actually yeah, answer no, the no, question no, no. for you. The reason I can't answer the question is in order to answer any of these sorts of questions, you need data. You need hard evidence data for it, and you need randomized controlled trials to get that data. Now, do you know how much a randomized controlled trial costs to run? I one like one to... drug to answer a question, how much does it cost? I won't even have a clue. Have a, have a guess. A million. 10 million for a decent randomized controlled trial. Haven't they just finished one in the US on testosterone? I've, I've got to read it properly, but I'm pretty sure they've just finished In one order like to that. do one decent randomized controlled trial, the drug company that is trying to bring their new drug to market needs yeah. to be pretty confident that it's going to pass the test. And they need to be pretty confident that there's a huge market for it and that it's on patent. So they're going to get their money back because nobody wants to spend 10 million quid to then sell paracetamol to people with headaches. Everyone knows it works. <laughs> yeah. One of the leading drugs we use for people with heart failure is a drug called Fruzamide. It's a water tablet. You know, We all know it's great for people with heart failure because you give them the tablet and all their swelling goes away. Right, but is okay. there any evidence for it? No, there's no evidence for it because it's cheap as chips. No one's ever going to do a it's trial. Actually a trial on it, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been around too long. You know, it's been around since the 1950s, 1960s. So no one's ever going to do that trial. Do you think if they regulate a testosterone use or um, steroid use or anything like that, that they could have a bit more of a control on it? You you control everything by regulation, but in reality, people are always going to go and find it through the back doors. Yes, but it, maybe if it was more accessible to people, like in general because i think in the uk obviously we've got the nhs and then if someone wanted to go and use testosterone or their their hormones weren't quite right it's it's probably really hard so say like poor uh, it's, it's 45 um I'm, in, I'm not 45 no, by the way surely not <laughs> in, in five years by the way he's 45 <laughs> but in 45 say his testosterone levels really dropped and then he's at a point like oh i'm feeling sluggish i'm feeling this i'm feeling that it it's, it's really hard for anyone to access and get testosterone and get, you know, see a doctor and get that kind of side yeah. of stuff done. I think um, it would be fair to say it's not a priority of the NHS at the minute. And furthermore, all of these sort of vaguely controversial programs require 
you, you, you've got to put your business case together really very well to say why you're going to benefit people. And if you're going to someone, the commissioners, to say, hey, look, I, I want £100,000 to get a practice, uh, you know, get a nurse and a doctor with an interest in this so that we can go to gyms and we can provide better support for these blokes. I think more so, though, I, I, what I'm trying to get at, at 45, mm. a lot of people at 45, when their testosterone, do, testosterone does go low, yeah. it causes a ripple effect on their well-being, suicide risk, all that type of stuff, because yeah. they get depressed, they get, you know, they, they put on weight, they then in turn get a bad heart because they put on weight, because they are depressed, because they can't get to bed. So I'm, I'm more going down that route than, I know what you're saying, yeah. going to a gym and just giving it to a 30-year-old Roy dead. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm saying more for the clinical side of stuff. It's It would be hard for someone at 45 to, I, don't, I speak to a lot of clients and we, we check our testosterone levels. Sometimes they're really low. And then they go to a doctor and they go, oh, it's in, within range. But it might be only like a point within range. And then they might be, the range is so wide mm -hmm. that they're in between that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not your area of expertise though, yeah. huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. so, but you know, you know what I'm saying though, don't you? Like yeah. it's, a, it's a very different thing. Wait, wait, if, if, if you know any endocrinologists, mate, point them in our direction. Oh, bring them in. Yeah, yeah, please do.